Teflon be gone. I can make whole meals in this pan that can then go inside the oven and heat up. They can sit outside for a bit, then they can cool down and then I can reheat them, I can grill, I can use it on the open fire, I can put it on the barbecue. Kate told me last week, Felicity, that you are the uh, culinary expert and chef custom recipe extraordinaire. <laughs> so my, is... my first question was around, uh, did you do the recipe for the shakshuka that's on your uh, website, the Ironclad Pan website? Oh, that was actually... Um, that was before me. Before Felicity joined, that was another friend of mine, Jo, who is also a chef and now a food stylist. So she developed the first six recipes. Um, the shakshuka, the brownie and the... A few of those early ones were from Jo. Okay. Yeah. And how come you need a, a custom recipe developer? What's different about the ironclad pan where you can't just use, you know, the Edmunds cookbook, for example? Oh, you could. I think um, I think the difference is, oh, you should talk about this. Are we actually recording at the moment? You are, yeah. <laughs> well, I just have to say that if you do go to the website in a couple of weeks, you'll find the lamb meatballs with halloumi <laughs> and a garam masala, garam masala, coconut, cream curry sauce, and they're really, really good. That yeah. sounds delicious. Is that what you're eating at the moment? Is that what those yeah. lamb meatballs are? Yeah, I made, I whipped that up yesterday. Um, and I've just got back from a meeting, so I apologise to be eating and talking at the same well, time. at least it's something you've made in the can. Yeah. Well, it shows it's real. It shows that, you know, the recipes that you're actually making, you're testing. Uh, mm. and I actually quite like it. Um, but what I'll do then, Felicity, is as we're talking through, is I'll ask you the questions later on, and we'll start with Kate and next to her. launching the company and uh, what you and Joe have been up to to actually come up with this idea to reinvent something which is probably one of the most um, essential elements of humankind that goes way back like when you go to the, the British Museum or or um, you know any heritage museum there's always cooking instruments and cooking over an open fire was either a pot or a pan uh, and here we are in 2020 and apparently we've been doing it all wrong what what does the ironclad pan do that the last 8,000 years has got wrong. Well, I think maybe we were just trying too hard to reinvent something that was nearly perfect. All of the, um, all of the modern materials like Teflon and things like that, um, that's got a really bad rap for its toxicity and it's just not necessary. I think that if we go back to things like cast iron, there's qualities of that that will be so durable, last forever, like really hardy um, when it's treated well, oiled up and um, looked after, it becomes super non-stick so there's no need for any chemicals or additives or anything like that and it can go from um, from the stove top to the open fire to um, you know, what, into what, the oven. Yeah, into the oven, under the grill. It's sort of so versatile. You just can't put it near a microwave. But why would you want to use one of those anyway? Um, and or a dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> that would spin a microwave out. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> I, I no, completely yeah. agree. I don't even uh, own a microwave. Um, and when I was reading on your site, there's something different about these pans in terms of uh, how they are presented when you sell them. You have to do something called pre-seasoning and caramelized mm. onions is a really good thing to pre-season them what does that mean for the buy and z made audience that's listening you're know, pre-seasoning a pan okay um well i think we're the only one that comes unseasoned and part of the rationale behind that was wanting to remove all um unnecessary chemicals and dyes and toxins from the process of making them and we wanted to put the um, seasoning in the customer's hands. A lot of my initial research when I was getting right deep into cast iron um, fanatics was um, I found quite a few people, especially based in America, would get their uh, cast iron pan from the shop that was pre-seasoned and they would strip it back and start again so that they could be in control of it. 
Why does that matter? Is there a taste thing that comes with it or is it is it a protection element? Um, probably a bit of both. I think the people who wanted to control it from the beginning wanted to have their own flavours from the start. Um, but if you do it right, it protects the pan and it sets it up better for longer, I guess. So we, we give it to you raw. It's quite light silver, not like the black that you're probably used to seeing cast iron in. Um, and you get a little 50 ml bottle of uh, Uncle Joe's grapeseed oil. And that was a choice after, again, lots of research finding that grapeseed oil was a, had a really high smoke point, minimal flavors that, um, that would affect later cooking. And um, yeah, and the company, Uncle Joe's is awesome. Another New Zealand in Marlborough, New Zealand made from local Sauvignon Blanc seed grapes down there hand pressed, family run. I love their story too. And so we sort of joined up with them and we've got these little sample oils. And and the instructions are in a card that comes with the pan, but they're also on our website. It just means you slow down a little bit, like on a Sunday afternoon and take time to read the instructions, follow the steps. They've been researched and I've done it badly a few times to get it to the right stage of doing or right way of doing it. Um, and then it's best to do it and then leave it in the oven overnight to cool right down and come come up to being used the next day. But it's taking the time, I think, in the initial stages and then um, that sets you up for the next 100 years at least. So, Isn't there some thought around um, seasoning and people using dye and, you know, that, yeah. that there can be some nebulous, is that the right word? I don't know. And there can be some strange ways of people getting black, getting it from silver to black. Yes. And it's all done too quickly by a machine, by high furnaces and stuff. I mean, I've yeah. seen some of the videos of other companies that do it and you just say, like, how does that happen? Because mm. this, this pan takes a long time to go black. It, um, yeah. It you know, doesn't go black immediately. So it no. goes this beautiful bronze color. So yeah. it goes from silver to bronze, yeah, and then over time it becomes jet black. So it's it's a slower process, which probably speaks to slower food, which means longer uh, time with your family or longer time with preparation, uh, which is probably a good time to introduce yourself, Felicity. So um, for the listeners, this is Felicity Morgan Rind to the right to of the eight. right. And Felicity and is she looks after the custom recipe side for ironclad pan. Now, what are some of your favorite recipes? So for, for those people who are thinking, all right, um, I've been doing my, my pan uh, life all wrong. Uh, what can you do on an ironclad pan that you can't do on a really easy to use Teflon uh, pan that you could get from Briscoe's on a Sunday at half price? Oh, <laughs> there's so many things that you couldn't do in those pans that we can do in ours. And I just want to start by saying that when I came on board Ironclad Pan Company, I didn't have an iron pan. You know, I just didn't have one. And I started cooking on it and I was like, wow, that I can do, I can make whole meals in this pan that can then go inside the oven and heat up. They can sit outside for a bit, then they can cool down and then I can reheat them, I can grill, I can use it on an open fire, I can put it on the barbecue. It's totally versatile and the more you use it, the more it's just like this really amazing non-stick thing mm. so teflon be gone this <laughs> makes pancakes it just makes everything mm. taste baking, good. baking. i was yeah. so surprised at all the amazing yeah. baking that felicity came up with and you don't immediately think oh i'm gonna make tarts and brownies and things like yeah. that in a pan but this is sort of perfect for it is too. perfect for it and also it makes the best tart to tan i'm yet to do it but i will be coming up with this soon i want to make a beetroot tart to tan so it's, mm -hmm. it's an upside down caramelized beetroot with puff pastry on the top so it makes great apple tart to tans i just as a as a kind of a, a hobby which is a passionate hobby of mine mm -hmm. is cooking suddenly having this pan that now i don't cook it it I don't cook anything. I don't cook in anything else but my pan now. So mm. I'm kind of in love with it. Do you? Yeah. And Felicity's got two. Yeah, I've got two. <laughs> um, which is so awesome because I can be like, you know, doing a whole lot 
of things all at once. The problem with Teflon or with any other pan is that you've usually got a plastic handle, so you mm. can't put them from from the top of the stove into the bottom. You definitely definitely can't take them camping with you. Um, I don't know, and also they're thin bottomed, so there's something about the heat mm. that caramelizes things beautifully. You were talking about caramelized onions before being a good thing. So you season your pan, then you start cooking things in it that help the seasoning stick. Mm. So caramelized onions is one. Bacon. Bacon is so amazing in that pan. Have you tried cooking it? Yeah, well, yeah. So you start it cold. So you don't get the pan really hot. You just put the pan on the cooker, turn on the gas, put the um, all your invection or um, whatever you're using, put the bacon in cold, and it just, oh, so <laughs> yummy. We've got a video of bacon cooking coming up soon. So, <laughs> What are some of the, the feedback that um, you've received, both Kate or Felicity, you can answer this, of, from customers, you know, do they, have they been sharing what they've been cooking, um, photos and, and experiences that maybe that you've gone, oh, I didn't think about doing that? Um, I, that is a good question. I, I haven't been particularly surprised by anything, have you? No. no. Because I've kind of decided that I'm just going to make everything. So if I'm <laughs> going to make a chocolate tart, you know, a really expen- which we, we did, and that was in the Mother's Day Herald version. And it's a mm. great recipe if you want to do it. It's, um, what was it? Baked pears with mandarins and bay leaves and then turn mm. turn those roasted pears into a chocolate tart. That was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, one person um, yesterday, actually, it was um, for, I'm going to sound like I'm name dropping now, but we ended up giving a pan to um, Peter Gordon, who Felicity is quite good friends with as well. He taught me how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he um, suggested sending one to his friend Josh Nyland in Sydney. And so we did that. And Josh yesterday posted this um, amazing, like a, a toasted cheese sandwich that he made on the in the pan. But he had this cool thing that he was at pressing that, toasted so like, like a bit like a panini maker yeah so like down squishing. onto it yeah. so it was getting all like squished onto the pan and all juicy it looked amazing i, was like, I hadn't thought of doing yeah the toasted cheese sandwich in the in the pan like that yes press. yeah 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 that was cool. get rid of those teflon coated sandwich makers <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all you need honestly all you need is this pan uh, going back to the the original um the, the story behind starting this company um when did you decide that you wanted to start ironclad pan um i'd been talking to a friend and to my husband a lot about creating a product because i'm a graphic designer by trade so um i wanted to do something that was a product rather than a service and being a total idealist i wanted it to be a product that would make people's lives better and um, be good, like good for the environment, um, long lasting, all of the things that I think we've achieved actually with the company. So it started in 2016, those kind of conversations. And then um, we did lots of research and things like um, testing out, getting the pan made in China initially. And that was a disaster. It came back completely the wrong size. The fonts that I'd supplied um, with the contract being forged or cast into the base were like all haywire. They'd gone wrong and lost in translation or something. And when we got it back and all of this packaging, I just said, "This, this just doesn't feel right. It's not sustainable getting it made over there we're getting a product that i don't feel like i've got control over it's not the right size it just felt all wrong and it was at that stage that i said i'm going to have to has to be made in new zealand for it to be like a quality control thing and to make sense with our whole story and ethos and sustainability and craftsmanship we wanted to be local so that we can be across all of the quality control and everything as well She's very, very strict on what goes out the door, <laughs> aren't she? Yeah. Which is, um, you know, the the feedback I get about New Zealand Made is that uh, Kiwis don't want to pay more than 5 to 15% for locally made, yet your pan is probably three times the price of what you could get a, you know, a, a made-in-China pan 
um, made, uh, you know, bought for down at your local franchise shop. So, yeah. and you're saying it's been a success. So, what are, are you doing that's different that's getting people to to want to buy into this story? Um, I think it is the the story and the genuineness of the story, um, and knowing and seeing it being made here by a local foundry and it's a, it's a slow old school process it's all hand poured handmade and i think that people can really especially now after the whole covid disaster um appreciate the value in that and we don't make a lot of money on it we don't have huge margins you know it's um we would have been much better off business wise getting it from china but it just it's not but that's not where the value lies. And I think if we can, and we do genuinely do the 100-year guarantee, if we can say we believe in this product so much, um, spend the money now, and you'll end up saving so much money long-term because mm. it will be something that will be handed down for generations. We say 100 years, three generations, I guess, but who knows, it could be more than that. It's something that's... Um, there's no false economies in it. Like you're not going to rebuy this pan unless you buy more for friends or gifts or whatever. It's just like a buy it once, look after it and it'll be yours forever. So I think, I think that when you're real about it and you're honest and you do have crazy strict quality control and I think a really good customer service, like I do talk directly to a lot of my customers and if they're not happy, we sort it out or if there's, um, different feedback that, that we need to um, talk to them about. We talk directly, so I think that there's value in that as well. Sorry to interrupt. This won't take long. Subscribe to the show and you'll never miss another one of these amazing episodes. Right back to the show. Yeah. I really the, the, care about it, Kate. <laughs> She's really, she really cares about it. I do. I think you've, you've struck onto something really um, important in that, you know, as as humans, we, we like to share meals with people that we, um, you know, that we love, uh, whether that's friends or, or family. And sometimes when those members of the family aren't around anymore, uh, it's actually the food that we enjoyed with them that we celebrate. I know within our family, uh, my parents have created a, a book of the family recipes from both sides of the family. And on my dad's <laughs> side... Uh, he's from Canada, right? So his parents had uh, dishes that, that they had growing up in Toronto that were from like the 1940s and 1950s that are in this book. But he, here's my problem is that the recipes are there, but part of the trick with getting a recipe right is actually having the hardware to replicate it. And I think what's awesome about your product is that in a generation or two generations, not only do you get Felicity's recipe handed down and kind of morphed and changed into your own, uh, but you've got the the pan that's had all of that use by the father or the or the mother that then gets handed down. And so I think you know now's great, but in like a decade or two, that pan really would would come into its own because it's it's the stories, it's the memories. It's going to be a very tasty yeah. pan in fifty years. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people are still eating food in 50 years. Yeah, that was what, <laughs> one of the little, um, we were trying to figure out how to future proof, you know, for 100 years. And we're like, do you think we're going to be still eating the way we do now? Or is it going to be like freeze dried packets of something or other? I don't know. Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> there's always that place, isn't there, for convenience, but there's also always that place for tradition. And yeah. uh, where we are now post COVID, uh, People like to go back to what they know and tradition is one of those places. And I think so a product like this is right on time for the times we're now living in. Um, mm. Now let's let's talk about the recipe vault side of it because that's, that's not a physical pan, is it? That's a whole kind of digital element. Yes, and that's something that we were pretty excited about too um, because it, it creates the ability, like you say, to share the family recipes. It's completely private. So when you sign on and anyone can, can use it, you don't have to have a pan. You can just have your recipe book. And um, you share 
those family, upload them and you can share them with whoever you choose in the family, wider family. Um, and then they can add to it or comment on it and you end up um, really capturing like grandma's chicken or Auntie Sue's version of grandma's chicken and things like that that you can then store securely for forever as long as we're, we're going to update world. the software as it changes yes yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll stay on top of that but the other thing that we're going to look to do is um be able to print the family recipe bolt into a little book so we're working on that side of it with our developers and once people get a bit of a catalog up they'll be able to press print book and then have a, a hard copy of the recipes as well very Starting. nice and felicity have, what's your experience of using the the recipe vault so far for your I, recipes because i just put them in the, <laughs> all of, I've, I've i've always cooked a lot i've never written any recipes down in my entire life so this is a whole new thing for me wow. is actually writing the recipes down it's much harder than you think to actually you know stop and <laughs> stop and go okay one. is that one teaspoon yes that's a teaspoon so mm. i haven't used the vault yet but mm. i'm sure i will in time so you're and more sure going by the feel of it like does that taste right does that that is that yeah, yeah. by the yeah. look and the feel of it yeah that's how i cook i catalog them for her so she doesn't have to type it in <laughs> she's really great like that and i'm what i'm really enjoying about it also is taking the photos and making little films about the food yeah. that that's kind of my my day job is being a director i do a lot of advertising directing and particularly in the food space so to be able to just have my little camera on my iPhone mm -hmm. and shoot food and make it look tasty and do it all by myself with nobody else is really fun. I'm looking at the on on the website now, the ironcladpad.com website, and the the food photos are stunning. Uh, and I know but, it's not easy to take photos of food. That, no, uh, it's not. <laughs> it, it it seems much easier, but when you get into it, yeah, just to get the lighting right or to get it to actually look oh. natural, uh, it's not easy. Yeah. And a lot of delicious tasting food, when you take a quick snap of it, looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm often thinking, I think when I am actually thinking about what recipe I'm going to make next is like these meatballs that I made yesterday. I knew I was going to do lamb and halloumi. And then when I looked at them in the pan, I thought, you know what? Lemon um, wedges would be really good on this. You just have to squeeze the lemon mm. wedge over the top. So I popped them in too. And that just kind of elevated the whole thing because you just don't want to be looking at brown food. It's not fun. Mm. No, very true. Yeah. Does this have a place in food service as well? Um, or is this more for the the home cook that wants uh, to elevate their cooking? Well, good question. We've actually been talking with um, Mike van der Elzen, who has his, we sent him a pan at the beginning too, to get his feedback and he loved it, which was very reassuring. Um, and we're sort of figuring out ways that we can work together. And one of the things that we're doing is, oh, last week I drove out and gave him five pans to use in his cooking school, because he's got, um, an amazing cooking school out in Uruguay now. Mm. And so he, he's going to be using those in that sort of environment. And I, I do wonder whether it could be something that we take more into restaurants. And yeah, there's another um, New Zealand uh, crew in Onihanga called Everybody Eats. And I'm yet to find out more about them. I'm meeting them next Friday. But I think they do a project where they're helping feed the communities. Um, yeah more information will come but i'm meeting with them and we're hopefully going to be providing them with pans as well so it, i think there's a space for them to be used in um more industrial oh absolutely i think great and pete's yeah. going to use them at homeland yes isn't he yeah so peter gordon's launching a new business yes because he's just caught back from he hasn't he from he used to do providors in, in london and he's yeah. decided new zealand's now home he's ready finally Yes. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, so right. yeah, he'll, he'll yeah. So we'll he'll be using our pans. Yeah, he was excited and about very happily, I'm sure. Yeah. What else haven't I asked you that uh, we should be covering off in terms of ironclad pan, and in terms of the the recipes, Felicity, that you're up to? 
or Kate in terms of the, the business side of it. The only one on the, the top of my mind was uh, as a relatively young company, do you have export plans or is the New Zealand market big enough as it is or do you just you know, take the, the orders online from wherever they come from? Um, yes, we take the orders online from wherever they come from. So we've had a few to Australia and one to Singapore, two to America and two to London so far. But um, because sustainability is like a major um, pillar, pillar, <laughs> important <laughs> thing for us, what, what our long-term plan would be if we can make it really successful here in New Zealand, then we'd like to set up a, a local foundry in Australia so that there wasn't all of the shipping um, and delays and things like that going on. So pie in the sky idea would be um, set up a local 400 one. foundries around the world. <laughs> no, like not big. Not, How am I going to quality control that? <laughs> <laughs> um, we could, if we can kind of, you know, steal the American market, that would be good. Oh, that would be good. I, and I'm sure there's like, in New Zealand, we're the only New Zealand made cast iron pan now. We might get competitors, hopefully that'd be great. But then if we move to Australia, um, there are a couple of foundries over there that do cookware. So we would be a challenger brand over there. Um, and then in America, of course, that's where Lodge and all of the massive... Mm. Um, machine yeah. made things come from so that would be an interesting market but I think that long term it would be about keeping it local because otherwise if you're shipping um, mm. things and they're heavy you know like it's not it's not good for not the environment paper. yeah so if we can if we can use local as one of our key ideas then that would be an interesting thing to export. a foundry on a small Greek island I think <laughs> That's where you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> On the Aegean Sea. I think, that, okay, that's an important point you raise around the, the competitor side of it. A lot of businesses are, are um, worried about competitors, but actually competitors are good because they share the cost of educating the market. And yeah. uh, it's actually easier to launch into an existing market because you can just take market share. But if you're trying to do everything in a different way, Mm -hmm. then you're actually looking for people that um, may or may not exist. They may exist, but they're getting it from a different country uh, and mm -hmm. therefore you've got to convince them to get it here, which would be easier. Uh, but actually the, the competition for anyone doing a, a cast iron a pan is for people who just buy Teflon, right? Or, or don't yeah. cook at home, they eat takeout. Those are, those are actually the competitors, particularly in a, in a recession where uh, money's tight there is less to go around. But I think what I like about your product is that uh, for those that do want to start cooking at home, you can buy the pan, get the recipes and get into it. And if, you, yeah. if, if you've got five or six go-to recipes on your cast iron pan, uh, you could probably save quite a lot of money uh, by yeah. investing in the pan after probably three or four months. Totally, even less. Uh, you asked and before, we've got yeah. afterpay set up yeah. too, so you don't have to pay two hundred and forty dollars immediately. We've got that um, afterpay system where you can pay a little bit now and then a little bit. Yeah, which later. is awesome. And I think if, I think before you asked me what were some of my favourite recipes, I think that the fish balls and the rocket oh, yeah. and basil coconut broth are so good. I'm writing this down. Fish balls. Why those ones? I can't remember what were the other things that we've made. That fennel bread, that is, is, yeah. that, that's my Greek-inspired stuffed fennel bread. That just is so yummy. What else yeah. have we made? That Oh, the lemon pudding, self-sourcing oh, lemon pudding in memory of my mother. That was pretty good too. I mean, I think they're all delicious. I probably wouldn't put them up there if I didn't think they were really good. Yeah. Tonight, I've got friends coming for dinner, and actually I got a whole lot of meat from Moorish got delivered. Oh, nice. So Morris is an organic butchery. I think they're down the line somewhere. Do you know where they are? I don't know, actually. Do I know? And um, they've um, they've sent me four eye fillets and some prosciutto mm. de parma. All yeah. so that's organic prosciutto, which wow. is you know awesome because it's hard to get those kind of small goods that are free range here. So I'm going to fry up some some steaks. Not sure what else is going yeah. to happen yet, but there's probably going to be a photo. 
Good. <laughs> well, you'll have to send some of those photos through. So when we're uh, putting this up as a, a final episode, sure. we have some delicious photos and, and recipes to go with well, it. I'll take another notes. bite of this so you can cut away from the eating <laughs> to actually the dish. Mm. <laughs> This is... <laughs> You're making You're it too easy on our uh, videographer. He's looking to the side guy. Yep, thumbs up. <laughs> That's very easy for our videographer now. <laughs> I reckon this is a really great thing to get men cooking. It's a mm. real butch sort of piece of equipment. You know, it's heavy. Not too mm. heavy, though. Can you use so it on I, the barbecue? It, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I've developed a recipe for Father's Day that I think will get everybody's taste buds zinging it's an experiential recipe so if you can get outside and cook mm. outside over some open fire open co um, over coals it will taste even better but if you can't it's going to be fine in the, in the oven as well but i think it's a really great present for men get them mm. get them cooking get their you know yeah their culinary juices fired up so this is dad's cooking for the rest of the family or it is son's cooking for dad's or it's son's cooking for the whole family. It's basically yeah. making guys work on Father's Day, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they love, you know. I see you, what you're you doing. Like in the middle there, don't you, doing something. <laughs> yeah. At the barbecue? Yeah, at the barbecue. Well, thank you very much to both of you, Kate and Felicity, for being on a Kiwi Original. You're certainly adding to the, the tapestry of what we're getting known for in New Zealand. And what I like about your product is it really puts pay to the story that it's too expensive to produce here and we can't compete. Uh, it speaks to that you can compete on different grounds. And uh, mm -hmm. by what you're really doing here is bundling more than just the pan. There's the pan, there's the recipes, there's the family or friends experience. Then there's the handing it down. There's all these different elements that go far beyond just is this a quality item or will it do the job? And, and I think more manufacturers and makers in New Zealand could follow your lead in their own category uh, because I think what you're doing is great. You're leading with brand. You're leading with story. Uh, it is a beautiful looking product and I'm not surprised by how much um, support you got through COVID-19. I saw it across social media and was really impressed. So I think anyone uh, who's looking to save a bit of money, go and get an ironclad pan from ironcladpan.com and then start your generational recipe. Uh, start it now. This has been a Kiwi original brought to you by the New Zealand Made team. Thanks for watching. Uh, the New Zealand Made trademark is used by the 1200 businesses in New Zealand. Uh, the New Zealand Made team licenses that trademark. Check if you're eligible at buynz.org.nz. If you feel that someone should see this, share it with them now. Otherwise, subscribe to youtube.com forward slash buynzmade and we'll see you on the next episode.